Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Hey, do you collect stuff? Anything in particular? Uh, junk. Junk, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we have a storm in a junk. Oh, well, let me ask you this to, to, to ref define the question. Um, could you be more vague? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I have a lot of? Uh -huh. Baseball caps. Oh, hats, yeah. I probably have easily 200 baseball caps. Well, I am a collector of baseball cards. As is my son. Not a large number of them, but very special ones only. And today on the show, things that you have probably hiding in your closet that are now worth big bucks. And that's next, Ronnie, on Men Are So Smart. I like it. again my friends Hello. and welcome to another episode <laughs> of men are so smart and buster's, dogs. Not, buster's not a fan of uh, mrs doubtfire no i don't think uh he is uh thank you buster for weighing in this morning welcome to another episode of men are so smart where anything can happen and usually does yes. uh, today uh, we're talking about things you might have in your closet that may make you a lot of money and you don't even know it's there because what's old isn't always new again but your treasures from years past might just make you wealthier uh and not only that you could find out you could uh find out which items in your attic are worth a pretty penny insiders scoured the internet and consulted two antiques and collectible experts and they came up with the following list. Old computers may be bulky and obsolete, but don't toss them to the curb just yet, especially if you have an original Apple. Ooh, oh boy. I, I know there's gotta be bunches of these laying around. Yeah. An Apple One circa 1976 is one of the most valuable computers sought by collectors. That particular model sold for $355,000 at Christie's last year. It's all downhill from there, though, financially speaking. Later models, such as the Apple II or the Apple III, are priced in the $1,000 to $2,500 range, uh, according to sources. That still seems pretty, uh, that's, that's pretty good for something you can just pull out of your closet and throw up on Craigslist. It's just or, sitting there yeah. and collecting yeah. dust. Now, this is something we have lots of mm -hmm, here. Me too. Vinyl records. I have a bunch of crates of them. Uh, yeah, we have milk crates. We must have six or eight milk crates of yep, vinyl records. Me too. About four or five. Uh, vinyl fanatics rejoice. Your prized albums may be worth a whole lot of dough. Some of the most collectible records include The Beatles, Yesterday and Today, which has gone for as much as 15300 on eBay. And Bob Dylan's The Freewheelin' Bob Dylan, which is sold for $35,000. For a guy who's just going to mumble through the song. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I have the very first two uh, release in America Beatles albums. Oh, I didn't know that. Introducing and Meet the Beatles. Uh -huh. uh, and they're both, in fact, uh, one of them, whichever the brown one is, I think that's Meet the Beatles is not even stereo it's a mono oh wow that is going back that's crazy yeah. uh for those of that are very young and uh, hearing the word mono for the first time no it's not an affliction or disease it's not the <laughs> disease that i had when i was 21 <laughs> no <laughs> uh okay next up on our list of things you may have in your closet that could make you rich vintage cereal boxes now this i find very specific dixie says that cereal box craze began about 20 years ago uh, with Wheaties, when the General Mills brand launched sports-themed collectible boxes. I've seen things all the way back to the 1910s, this person says. On eBay, a set of three Dallas Cowboys Wheaties boxes is going for $119. Dang. Those who prefer Kellogg's products can buy a large Frosted Flakes box from the 50s for $350, what a complete bargain. with the original Tony the Tiger. They're great! <laughs> yeah it's actually a finger isn't it yeah it's not, not the, not, you get the right the finger fist. Okay. Uh, the next thing first edition books tell me more okay that's no secret first edition books are obviously the most valued uh, uh, but especially of classics like The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and The Wizard of Oz 
could be worth between nine hundred thousand and a million dollars. Wow! Um, according to a, a a roundup of rare first editions, but those aren't the rarest finds. That honor goes to a sixteenth century first edition Nostradamus prophecies. Wow! Uh, which that was listed for a mind blowing twenty one million dollars it's funny ironically i checked that book out from the <laughs> library in 1963 and that's exactly how much i owe on fines. <laughs> on <the> fines yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so it works out see <laughs> next up things you might find in your closet or garage or attic that are worth lots of money vintage musical instruments boy mm -hmm. that's right up our alley yeah according to a 2011 list from Vintage Guitar Magazine. One of the rarest instruments is the Space Age Chic 1958-59 Gibson Explorer, Ooh. valued at a quarter of a million to $310,000. A 1936 through 42 Martin D45 is an even greater find. This steel stringed acoustic model could be worth between $250,000 and $400,000. Holy now, cow. I have some collectible guitars myself. You were just telling me a story about your Les Paul. Uh, you've got the Peter Frampton model, right? I have the uh, 1978 uh, Les Paul Custom mm -hmm. with the, it's black with the three gold pickups. Yeah, that's the Frampton model. Yep. And uh, I just saw one on, and I can't remember if it was eBay or Craigslist, 4000 bucks. Wow. And I paid right around 800 for it. Brand new. That's amazing, Ronnie. But yeah. Would you honestly? Uh, would you ever part with that guitar? You know what? It's been well played. Uh, oh, it's very heavy. I know it is. Super heavy. I don't feel like. Honestly, I would probably just buy. I I, I would sell it, and I would buy a newer Les Paul. The newer Les Pauls have a little uh, more cutout in them. Mm -hmm. They're uh, they're not. That's the thing about this guitar. Nothing's going to sound like a 15 pound guitar <laughs> because just that chunk of wood resonates. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I just, I can't, I can't play that thing live Your shoulder. anymore. Yeah. There's just no way. Well, you know, uh, Ronnie and I have been in a band since about 1975 or six or so. Yep. And one of the things that I did when we first formed the band was I bought myself an electric guitar, which was a Les Paul copy. And um, my dad would not buy it for me, but he set me up to make payments so that I could buy it myself. Right. Which, um, you know, was not much. It was maybe $30 a month or something like that. But still, um, I'm glad that he did that. You know, the truth of the matter is, I still have that guitar. Wow. Now, I know, Ronnie, that over the years, we've had more than our share of out-of-tune moments. Oh, yeah. Because it's not a Les Paul right. um, uh, Gibson. Um, but I got to tell ik, you, ikvac. Ikvac, yeah. it's a, it was an international crown it's, or crown international. That's what it but is. But it had the CI yeah. on the, uh, right. on the headstock and Do we you, called it Ikvac. Now I have much better guitars than that. Uh, but I still have kept that one. And do you know that my son, Nick, who is 23, I think, or will be, um, he has that guitar in his room because he loves the sound of that solid body guitar yeah. that, that you just can't beat. Now, and I, again, I hate to keep beating a dead horse here, but I know it's not a, a Gibson, but it still has that Gibson sound to it because that's what they were striving for. Right. And it is so different than the sound of a Fender or anything else. Even, um, so I, I, I do a few guitar lessons and one of my students wanted to, an electric guitar. And I found him an Epiphone yeah. Les Paul copy on Craigslist for a hundred bucks. Right. I bought it and it is, it's sadly nowhere near the guitar that, that even yours is. Um, there it's, it's light. I'll give him that. It's as light as a Stratocaster. So, you know, playing wise, you can play it all day. We both play Stratocaster. I have a Stratocaster that I play much more than my, my Les Paul, but the sound is just, it can't compare. Yeah. And you know, uh, and we're kind of off topic here, but I don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> we can do that. My wife, yeah. My wife and I listen to a lot of music out in the garage 
and I, I don't know if it's as many years as being a guitar player that I have under my belt or what, maybe just being a music lover, but I can actually tell you which song is, or I'm sorry, which guitar is being played oh, at yeah. what time in a song. And my wife is fascinated by that. And what's really cool is she's so fascinated that she's learning to differentiate the, the different sounds. Well, at, at the very least, you're distinguishing between a humbucker and a single coil pickup, mm -hmm. or even even single coils like on a Telecaster as opposed mm -hmm. to single coil on a Strat. Yeah. So well, we're big country fans, so there's a lot of uh, Telecaster, Fender Telecaster yep. playing that's going on. Yep. But at the same time, I have to say that an equal amount of guys, including Keith Urban, as opposed to maybe Brad Paisley, uh, Keith Urban plays a Stratocaster a lot. Yep. So, um, yep. and a Telecaster as well. Yeah. Uh, in any case, your guitar could be worth a lot of money. Yep. Check it out. Uh, next up, comic books. Oh man, I never got into this phase. You know what? I I liked a few comic books. I was a kind of a Batman, Superman, Spider Man guy back in the day. Mm -hmm. But after I read them, threw them away. Yeah. They were they didn't cost much. What a shame. Fifteen cents. Probably. Yeah, they were fifteen or twenty cents, something like that. But the market for comic books remains very strong, bolstered by the popularity of the movie adaptations of superior stories. So all the Marvel and DC movies that have come out have definitely driven the price up. Uh, most valuable comics are those from the golden age of American comics, which spans from the late 30s to 1950. Uh, 1939 issue of DC's Detective Comics that introduces Batman is now worth a whopping $1.38 million. Dang. That's crazy. <laughs> That's so, a lot of money per I mean, laugh. Yeah. If you have old comic books and I do know people that have saved them and I actually, I know people that collect them still. Uh, or if you're a big bang, uh, <laughs> theory guy, you know that there are stores that sell old comic books. Oh, for sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, action figures. Did you have G.I. Joe's? I did. I love G.I. Yeah. Joe with the super kung fu grip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Take me back there. Uh, all things 80s are also a hit on the collectibles market. Action figures and play sets from the series He-Man and Masters of the Universe are among the most popular. Um, the 1986 Circa currently goes for just under 10 grand on eBay. Dang. Man, G.I. Joe. You know what I got one year for Christmas? I think it was about 1964 or 5. The G.I. Joe Space Capsule. Ooh. That was so cool. You know what we had? I had the G.I. Joe that came with a diving suit. I had that too. The problem was it leaked just a little bit. Yeah. And I didn't take G.I. Joe out of it and he got rusty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that happened to me once. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot. A lot actually. of stuff, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So this next one, probably no secret, baseball cards. Here we go. Boys are going to be boys, and they're always going to be interested in baseball cards uh, because they remind people of happy memories like the first baseball game they attended with their dad. Now, my son, my my brother-in-law, who, uh, who passed away decades ago, he left my son... An unbelievable collection of baseball cards, and they, we're talking complete sets. And so, in my son's closet, he has binder after binder after binder of baseball cards. Well, so he started with baseball cards, but he really liked basketball, and so he started collecting basketball cards as well. So, uh, you know, maybe he's got enough money to in his closet to live off for, for a while if he were to go through and start selling some. Why would he do that? He has you. Bingo. Yeah, exactly. Nailed it. Sports memorabilia makes the list. Sports memorabilia like specific players' jerseys are likely to turn a large profit. A jersey that Jackie Robinson wore in the year 1947 during his rookie season on the Brooklyn Dodgers sold at Heritage Auctions for over $2 million. Holy cow. Yeah, that's I have a Mickey Mantle jersey. I've seen it. Yes, yeah. that sucker cost me two hundred and fifty bucks to Dang. get that. Uh, yeah. Will it increase in value? Probably not. Yeah, but it sure makes me feel good. And you know why, Ronnie? And uh, again, this is 
along the sports memorabilia thing. When you and I are growing up and we we're fans of a team, right? We didn't have the option of going out and buying a jersey. No. They weren't available. No, they never it, sold jerseys no. back then. No. You could maybe get a hat, you know, but right. at, on, on hat day at the stadium. Yep. But I never, and, and I didn't grow up with a lot of money, so I never had any of those sports jerseys. And nowadays, I was able to buy one of my baseball hero. Um, and, and wearing it around, that's enough for me. I don't care if it ever values. Well, and you know, because even way back when, professional players wore sized caps. Right. They wore caps that fit their size head. Whereas all you could buy back then was the snapbacks. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't, no matter where no. you went, you could not buy a professionally sized baseball cap for your team. Right, right. So nowadays, and now... They make them with a kind of a flex fit, they call it. And so you can buy one that fits, you know, they have like two or three sizes maybe instead of 15 different cap sizes. Yeah. So at the very least, you can still end up with a, a hat from your favorite team. All right. Uh, we're just about at the end of our list of things that you have in your closet that may be worth a lot of money. What do you got, Ron? Uh, sneakers. Oh, yeah. Oh. I've been reading about this. Not just any old pair will bring the bucks. Uh, the rare auto lacing Nike mag sneakers, aka the sleek sneaks, made famous in Back to the Future. I like this. Uh, have gone for between thirty to sixty thousand dollars on eBay. That's fifteen to thirty thousand dollars per shoe. <laughs> it is. Sorry, didn't math. mean to do the math. I didn't know there was going to be math involved. Yeah, there wasn't supposed to be. Uh, in 2016, uh, sneaker enthusiasts had to enter a charity raffle. Sponsored by Michael J. Fox Foundation for a chance to snag the futuristic shoes. Could also make a profit on some old Chuck uh, Converse Chuck Taylor all You like those. You have those, don't I you? I do. I have uh, the Pia Flyers, mm -hmm. which look just like uh, Chuck Taylor's. Uh, from the 50s or 60s on eBay, the OG gym shoes are priced at between 100 and a thousand dollars. Do you need me to do the per shoe math on that or not? Uh, no. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Yeah. Um, carry the two, 17. Where are you carrying the two to? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do you have any of these items? Have you ever stumbled across something of value? Do you ever watch those shows, antique road shows? Yes. I think they're fascinating when the, the guy says, Well, I have looked at your computer mouse, <laughs> and I have established that this is from the Apple One uh, era, and uh, and how much do you think this is worth? Uh, Four dollars? No, this is worth seventeen million dollars. I love that. The person just goes, "Oh, there's some great stories on there that people found something that they liked at a garage sale, and they bought it for a couple bucks, and oh, it's a painting by a rare artist mm -hmm. or." Uh, you know, a piece of furniture, and yeah, this is you know some European thing. I it is. It's kind of a they're feel good stories, but for every one of those, they also have the one in there that <laughs> I I paid a thousand dollars for this. Well, unfortunately, it's a copy, <laughs> and it's worth about eighteen dollars. It's a knickknack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we hope you find something that's worth worth value, and if you do, we'll take half. <laughs> Thank um, you. Appreciate you watching today. I hope you had a good time. We've had a lot of laughs with yeah. you. And uh, we enjoy doing this for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, please become a subscriber to our channel and click the bell while you're there because yeah. that way you'll get notifications each time a new show comes out, which is at 9 a.m. Pacific noon Eastern time. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, our email addresses, I am Lou at Men Are So Smart. I'm Ronnie at menarsosmart.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll find all of our information below, along with space for you to leave comments, suggestions, whatever it might be. We do respond to your comments. Yes, sometimes with a snarky comment of our own. Which are always best. Yeah. I am Lou Gallagher. I am Corvette Ronnie. And we'll see you on, on the next Night Men Are So Smart. <laughs> rid of that thing. I See like you. it.